This video will unpack another of the key themes to explore in Shakespeare's Macbeth, the supernatural. The noun supernatural refers to events, powers, or creatures that cannot be proved or explained through science, often relating to gods or magic. Think about practices such as fortune telling, casting spells, or speaking with ghosts. It is very hard to prove or disprove events like this using science, but many people, even in the modern world, believe in some sort of supernatural powers or forces. In the Jacobean era, when Macbeth was written, these beliefs were considered the norm. King James I, who was on the throne when Shakespeare wrote Macbeth, was fascinated by witchcraft and the supernatural. He even wrote a book on the supernatural, called Demonology, which aimed to prove the existence of these forces, and to also lay out rules for punishing those who practised in the dark arts. It can be argued that the events in Macbeth are driven by supernatural forces, most specifically through the actions of the Weird Sisters and several other ghostly apparitions which appear with frequency in the play to sow mishap and mayhem for Macbeth. The play contains three specific forms of the supernatural. Firstly, witches and witchcraft. Secondly, apparitions such as ghosts and strange visions. And thirdly, the disruption of nature. Through these three elements, Shakespeare reveals the danger of interacting with supernatural powers, specifically witches. The protagonist of the play, Macbeth, is both tempted and preyed upon by the weird sisters as they tempt him with prophecies that heighten his ambition. And later in the play, they mislead him through strange visions which seem to hasten his tragic downfall. Lady Macbeth has a somewhat different relationship with the supernatural, and by the strength of her own will, welcomes dark spirits to possess her, so she can be purged of any guilt over the plan to murder Duncan. She, like her husband, loses everything she has as a result of embracing evil spirits. Shakespeare uses the supernatural in the play to create a fearful and unpredictable atmosphere. Supernatural events seem to drive the plot towards its tragic conclusion, seemingly to warn the audience that dabbling with the dark arts is not worth the risk, a view which in Jacobean times would certainly have won Shakespeare the favour of his wealthy patron, James I. Now let's take a look at a series of quotations from different parts of the play on the theme of the supernatural in greater depth. Shakespeare chooses to open the play with a supernatural event, which sets the tone for the troubling and disturbing events which will follow. The weird sisters gather on an empty heath and agree to meet with Macbeth after a battle. They chant the following lines in unison. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. This is a spell willing for the world to be twisted and turned upon its head. The words create a paradox a statement which seems to contradict itself using opposites, fair and foul, juxtaposed against one another. Shakespeare makes repeated references to these words in the play as the actions of Macbeth seem to echo these foreboding words. He is the fair warrior turned foul through trusting in the supernatural. Likewise, a fair and good king meets a foul end at the hands of his traitorous subjects. Lady Macbeth's first soliloquy in the play is filled with violent and shocking imagery of the supernatural. She calls on the spirits of darkness, commanding them, Come you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Here Shakespeare uses the imperative verb come to express Lady Macbeth's power over these supernatural forces. She commands them to attend her needs, perhaps identifying her as a witch herself. The phrase mortal thoughts seems to refer to the murder she has in mind. With her second command, unsex me here, she wills the spirits to remove her womanhood, something which at the time would be a sign of weakness, and replace it with direst cruelty. Shakespeare uses these lines to identify Lady Macbeth as a dangerous woman who is prepared to consort with supernatural forces to achieve her ambitions. 
Later in scene one, Lady Macbeth seems to use her supernatural power to tempt and deceive Macbeth. As they discuss the possibility of murdering Duncan, she urges Macbeth to look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Here Shakespeare makes an allusion to the biblical creation story of Adam and Eve, where the devil, in disguise as a serpent, tempts Eve to portray God by eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge. Shakespeare uses this lofty biblical reference to identify and link Lady Macbeth and Macbeth's actions to satanic origins. They become liars and deceivers, aligning themselves with the supernatural forces of evil, rather than the true and righteous God. Another key moment in the play, linking to the supernatural, is Act 2, Scene 1. Macbeth is led to the murder of Duncan by a floating apparition, or vision, of a dagger. It appears before him, and he questions, Is this a dagger, which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Here the dagger is symbolic of both the violent murder Macbeth is tempted to commit, but it also represents the spells and temptations of the weird sisters. It is possible to interpret the scene in two ways. Either Macbeth is hallucinating due to the stress and anticipation of a heinous crime, or he is being summoned to commit the murder by the same evil forces which drive the witch's prophecies. Later in the soliloquy, Macbeth references Pale Hecate, the goddess of witchcraft, which offers a further clue that his mind is in fact bewitched. Following Duncan's murder, Shakespeare makes repeated references to the supernatural disruption of nature. One of the first is when Macbeth, anxiously waiting for Duncan's body to be discovered, discusses the night with Lennox. First, Lennox comments on the unsettling behaviour of an obscure bird, which Lennox describes as clamoured or squawked through the livelong night. Secondly, Lennox comments, some say the earth was feverish and did shake. These happenings link to the Jacobean belief in the great chain of being. They believed in a natural order to the world, with kings as the highest form of earthly authority. Lennox's comment suggests that the very earth is feverish or sick, which seems to imply that Macbeth has caused a supernatural disruption in nature through his treasonous actions, which cannot be undone. At the beginning of Act 4, Macbeth has, by his own choice, returned to visit the Weird Sisters. This is a sign his character has become reliant on evil forces for guidance. As he approaches, the second witch states, By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. These lines use a chant-like rhythm and rhyming couplets to create the feeling of a spell, which associates Macbeth with evil and the supernatural. Furthermore, the description of Macbeth as something wicked seems to emphasise Macbeth's lack of humanity. Even to the witches, he is monstrous and twisted, an echo of the fair having become foul. In the final act of the play, Lady Macbeth is found sleepwalking by a doctor and a gentlewoman. She is seemingly haunted by supernatural visions of her crimes, seeing blood upon her hands which she cannot wash off. The line, out, damned spot, out I say, uses the symbol of blood to reveal Lady Macbeth's guilty conscience as she is haunted by the terrible images of the murdered Duncan, something she achieved through consorting with evil spirits. Shakespeare shows that the result is Lady Macbeth losing her mind. She is unable to sleep due to the bloody visions which plague her night times. Shakespeare uses this moment as a warning of the dangers of the supernatural. Lady Macbeth loses her mind as Macbeth loses any sense of humanity or hope. And ultimately, both lose their lives as a result of their foolish trust of supernatural powers.